Well, just as I predicted, dew everywhere. And you can't, well, I don't think you can. You can't put this beading in till you put the window in. Um, there's not enough room to get it over this, um, over the bead. Um, but with this goo, it's, it's quite slidey. It's quite a good lubricant, so you can actually put the bead in along the bottom, drop the glass in, and then feed it in as you go around. So a bit of cleaning up now. I don't quite know what's going on here. This is uh, my dash top panel. Obviously been recovered. And it looks like they ran out of material because I've put this piece in the middle. Uh, and it looks to be quite original. It's, it's quite nicely made with those cutouts and what have you. So I'm guessing this is original ply. What's left of it. But what I don't understand is, this is where the mirror went. Which screws into the uh, top of the indicator switch. But if we look at the indicator switch, that bracket that it screws into is higher than the ledge that the dash top fits into. And the round piston, this, this thing here, that's even higher. Now they've cut a little pocket here for that cylinder, but nothing here. So that is not going to sit down on the on the rebate on this this is my old dash panel here. It's not going to sit down on the bottom. So I think what I'm going to do is make it in two sections. So make a piece there with pockets for uh, this mirror and this and then another layer which is uh, which I'll glue together and it still leaves plenty of room uh, for a bit of padding and to be covered. This is four mil, four mil ply. But why this is like that, I don't know. First attempt at getting a pattern off this, which is asking quite a bit of it. This is my first layer in place, and plenty of clearance around the, the vents. And there's the indicator switch, and a couple of blocks pinned on. So this would be my first layer. Big clearance holes around the air vents. A couple of blocks pinned on. Uh, put that in place. A lot of glue. Put that on top. Clamp it all up. Leave it overnight. And that will give me a nice. It should should hold its flex quite well. And clamped up. And that's taken me all day to make that. But hopefully that's a nice fit. There's a bit, of a, a bit of a gap that end, which is about right to allow for the vinyl. But it's a bit tight this end. So I need to sand a bit off that. And I've put some, I've put some masking tape on, the, uh, on that crash rail. I don't want to glue that board to that by mistake. This is a tool, a piece of plywood between two boards. Um, when you're putting the air vent on, back on the dash top, if you turn the panel upside down and slide this over the air vent, um, it helps keep it straight and in place and stops it crushing 
and you just fold the edges over. Um, that's quite useful. Dash top finished. And I decided not to put any uh, padding under there, so that's vinyl straight on the board. And a dash cam. And that that will fit nicely behind the mirror so it won't get in my way too much. That's all tidy. These are the, I don't know what you call them, rear quarter interior light panels. Um, and I made them roughly, but and I put this piece in, that's the rear wheel arch. And if you haven't bought one of those Chinese sewing machines, those cobbler sewing machines, you're going to do your own interior, get one because they're brilliant. And I only paid £55 for mine and it will stitch through anything. Anyway, back to these. I'll, I'll put a picture of the machine in. Uh, back to these, so trial and fit and trial and fit and trial and fit. And it, what a load of work to make something that looks so rubbish. Um, but on with that now. This is my Chinese sewing machine. And it comes on three spindly legs and everybody modifies it. I put mine on a piece of um, RSJ. The main difference with this is the foot actually, the foot walks. So, um, it, with bulkier materials, it actually moves them along. And the, the foot actually rotates, so you can stitch in any direction. Um, really good. And here's my interior light panel, rudely repaired. Fancy that rotting out there. Anyway, it won't rot again, hopefully. Uh, so I'm going to cover this, and then I'll show you how I'm going to attach it to that. Right, so little update. That's covered. And that's covered this... I took this from the piece of cloth where the rear window fits, that bit of scrap from there. So that's done. This is a... The, I'm using this sponge um, as a padding. And I've cut out window where that goes. I'll come back to that piece. Uh, so I'm going to turn this back to front so this is the back and I'm going to cut this, pull it through and just glue this area for now. So that bit pulled through, glued and stapled. Now I've got to position this where I want it. I should have drawn around that first really but I'm pretty sure it came right down to the bottom there and over to there and that should be about right. And now I shall just um, put a couple of pins in just to check its location. And nailed on with some, these are 10 mil. I think they're actually carpet tacked, but they do quite well. If you slide a saw between this board and the cloth, um, you knock the nail in and, and it'll just round it over on the other side, which I think is pretty much how Jaguar must have done it. Maybe not with a saw. Um, right side up now. And I've got to try and gather all this cloth together and drag it through that hole. Looks like it's going to be a little bit tight, that. Let's see. Yeah, a little bit much, too much to ask of it. got a little rip in this, but that doesn't matter. Um, so we've got the board underneath there. Then that stuff. Uh, so I'll get a bit of glue on this, get this into position. And a bit of glue on this, trim it all up. That's the black stuff on, and I've sanded 
this edge here because it's quite tight trying to squeeze that under the under the woodwork and this cloth I think is much thicker than original stuff and I'll sanded that edge because that's a that'd be a nice edge next to the piping uh, so now I'll try and stretch this cloth over this And that's, uh, that's gone all right. Very difficult to pull it flat around here because of course you've distorted the cloth by trying to drag it around those corners. Not quite sure what's going to happen here. The wood, the wood finishes about there. This might just get tucked in. I'll leave it on for now. Untidy on the back. But so is the stuff I took off. So I'll get this on and I can staple it all the way around when I start to get to here I'm going to glue it on as well and leave it, leave it overnight. So I've seen a few cars where this is sort of here and it's sort of coming out and it looks a mess so I want to really concentrate on trying to get that to stuck well. And there we are, done. And I pulled the pulled some piping cord back from the edge, so about an inch there, about an inch there with nothing in it, so I can less bulk, and I can hopefully just tuck that all in behind the woodwork. Well, that's all right. See if it fits tomorrow. And there's that rear quarter panel in place. And that wasn't quite straightforward. I couldn't actually get that panel in or while this woodwork was in. So I had to take the window out, take the woodwork out, put it all back in. And it's still very tight behind this rebate. So I redid this. I had to take all the padding off. And I didn't curl it round. I didn't curl this headlining round the back of the board. I just trimmed it off flush to give me enough space to get it all in. And an LED bulb. And good to go. Now I'm going to see if I can make this centre centre strip for the front windscreen. Uh, you know the trouble I've been having. So I made up a little sample piece here. This is in stainless. And that's really simple, just two folds in the in the brake. And then I bent that over a bar. And before I put that crease down the middle, it fitted. Now it's a little bit tight. And I don't know whether it needs that, that crease in the middle. I mean, really, it should, that should be rounded rather than angled. I'll make it a touch wider than that. And see if I can put a bit of a curve in it. So this is it so far. And I had to leave quite a long tail on this side to fold it and then trim it off after. Uh, but it trims off quite easily. It's only 0.4 mil. 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, something like that. And this is actually the top of a microwave cooker. You cut out a casing. Play around for nothing with this. 